Hey, Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with the Cisco DevNet program. Yo, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode nine of DevNet Snack Minutes. If this is your first time with us, DevNet Snack Minutes is your weekly 10 minutes all things DevNet, where we talk about coding, APIs, and just cool stuff that we think you guys might like to enjoy. On this episode, we have a special guest for you um, coming in to talk to us about network programmability and what Cisco is doing towards that with the new release of Yang Suite. Jeremy, welcome to the party, man. Hey, Kareem. Hi, Snackers. Thanks for having me here. Very happy to join today and talk about the Cisco Yang Suite, the tooling that we're releasing to help with network automation and programmability. I'm so excited that we're doing this because I've been looking forward to the release of this tool for a year, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it, Matt? Yeah, exactly. Well, we have um, Yang Explorer. That's the tooling, the, each, the, the Flash-based tooling that's been out for quite some time. Uh, we have lots of users using this. It's public, open source, and is available here from Cisco DevNet uh, GitHub page. But really, this is the legacy tooling. It's, it's Flash-based, it's end of life. And really today, now we're talking about the Yang Suite, which is the evolution in the Yang-based tooling that we have here. So uh, Yang Suite, it works with primarily with Cisco IOS XE, but it's supporting XR and NX operating systems. And it works with the NetConf uh, API, the RESTConf API, as well as some of the next-gen APIs, uh, some of the Google APIs like gRPC and GNMI. So it's a full-fledged uh, tooling that's available to work with the APIs on all of our network devices that Cisco offers that have these Yang-based APIs. So can you uh, tell us how uh, developers or even network engineers that are that are starting to get into automation can leverage Yang Suite um, to kind of help move their path forward, make things a little bit easier, um, understand the inner workings of NetConf and RESTConf a little bit better? Yeah, absolutely. So as you know, the Yang-based APIs, they use the Yang data models here. And, and right now we publish them all on GitHub, but the tooling has availability to download the Yang models directly from the network device and then give us information or metadata or details about all of the data models. So it lets us understand uh, information about the specific models that we're working with. So an example here, when we're working with interfaces, um, we can load that interfaces data model through the tooling and then understand exactly what's contained in that data model. For example, counters and statistics for the Ethernet interfaces is, is one very common example that a lot of customers use for monitoring, uh, as well as doing um, just gets or sets to configure the interface or to get the statistics uh, or the configuration of, the inter of that interface. So Yang Suite allows us to download that data model, load it, understand what's uh, exposed within it. And then taking that one step further, um, we're actually able to construct and test the APIs. So we can use Yang Suite to build an API call uh, and Yang Suite will also send and transmit and receive that API call for us to the network device and then give us details about uh, the results there. So in the example here, again, we're just doing uh, interfaces and uh, I have just a pre-generated API call here to just give me the, the interface statistics. So if, when we go uh, over into the demo and actually run this, then we'll actually see the data that comes back from the network device from the, from the Yang-based API. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Jeremy, before we get into the, the demo, and I'm super excited about look, seeing this, what is, um, as a developer that I'm looking to adopt this and I'm looking to automate my network, how do I get my hands on this and what is what is the release like uh, for me? Yeah, good question. So how do you get this, this publicly available tool now? So uh, some of us are familiar with Yang Explorer that's been around for quite some time. So that's available on DevNet and um, as well as on GitHub. And we're following the same approach with the Yang suite. So first and foremost, um, on the DevNet site, um, developer.cisco.com slash Yang suite, you'll be able to go there and access all of the links and the resources, the documentation, and actual the, the install files. So um, on the developer.cisco.com, that's one option. And then also we're publishing it onto GitHub as well, also under the Cisco DevNet um, uh, domain. Um, and the repository is likewise just called Yang Suite. So you can go to the, the GitHub repository there and also find all the links and resources there. So you have a couple options. Um, you can also install it directly using pip. So you can just do a pip install Yang Suite, and then the tool will be installed into your Python environment that you already have in your, in your uh, system. So if we take a look over here at uh, the demo here, this is the, the main login page to Yang Suite. So let me just log in. 
you're running this locally, right? Uh, this is a locally run application? Yeah, I'm just running this locally. So that's why I just connect a local host here. And upon the first login, we need to accept the end user license agreement. So we can uh, click the button here just to review the EULA. Uh, and then once we're ready to accept that, we can accept it. Do people actually review that stuff then? Yeah, absolutely, right? So um, it, it is it is something uh, worth calling out that the Yang Explorer is free and open source and the Yang Suite is uh, covered under the Cisco EULA. So it is a completely separate license agreement uh, that's covering the two different products. Uh, obviously, Yang Suite is a much newer uh, product here with much more capabilities. So um, this is what it looks like when we first log into the tool. And as we discussed earlier about accessing and, and downloading the tool, um, the documentation is also built in to the tool. So, of course, you can go onto the DevNet site or onto GitHub and read the documentation there. Uh, but if you've also installed it locally, like I've done here, uh, we have access to the exact same set of documentation uh, built into the tool. So that's all here along the right side. Um, but really what I want to showcase here today is the, pre, uh, the prerequisites and some of the setup uh, that I already did. So first and foremost, when we're working with Yang Suite, we're typically working with a network device. Now, in this case, I've already added my Catalyst 9300 device, and I can go ahead and do a reachability check. What happens here is it just goes out, does a, a quick ping, and uh, it checks that the API is open uh, and connected and that we can authenticate to it. So that's what's happening right now. The tool is just going in and validating that the API is, is uh, accessible. And, and we get this green check mark, check mark here next to NetConf saying that it's all good to go. I have uh, pings ICMP disabled in my network. So of course, uh, it's no surprise that we have uh, ping failures, but um, this just tells us that the NetConf API is ready to go. So the next kind of step that we're doing when we set this up is to set up the repository. Uh, and I've already downloaded the data models from the device. So within each of our network devices, there's repositories of, of data models uh, that map to the features that are supported on that network, network device. So I've downloaded uh, all of the data models uh, over NetConf into my tool in here so that I can now go and work with these data models and, and interact with them as well as interact with the APIs. For this particular device uh, that you would use NetConf instead of RESTConf, um, is there, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm just, Yep, uh, the differences between NetConf and RESTConf, definitely um, in the, the initial release of this tool, we're just supporting NetConf and we will have okay. support for RESTConf coming. That's, that's on, the, on the roadmap for sure. Um, also okay, cool. for downloading the data models themselves, the, the Yang files themselves, um, that's a supported operation from NetConf. And that operation has different levels of support over RESTConf. So it's a little bit more difficult to download the individual data models over RESTConf. Well, it is still possible. Much easier, much more uh, supported by the RFC for NetConf. Ah, very cool. I didn't know that. That's some interesting information. Thanks, Jeremy. For sure. So here we are exploring the Yang models. Again, I just selected the repository from of the, of the data models that I have. And now we can just uh, type in whatever data model that we're looking for. So I'm just going to search for interfaces, and it brings up a list of all the interfaces that we have, all the all the data models that match uh, interfaces. I'm just going to load the one of the most common uh, data models here, which is the interfaces opper. This is the uh, operational Yang data model that gives us details about uh, the interfaces on this device. So when we expand this, uh, we get to see all of the uh, leafs and the containers and the lists uh, that are available to describe the data uh, that we're working with here. So if we select just one of these, for example, uh, the interface type, we get some information about uh, the description, the X path, the prefix. You know, these are all informations um, that we're using as developers when we're building payloads and when we're uh, orchestrating network uh, management systems. So this is just giving us uh, all the details about the model so that we can understand um, you know, when we go and do a get against this or when we subscribe to telemetry against this, what is this actually going to give us? So it tells us the, a description about it, as well as what kind of data to expect back, um, as well as which data are supported. So this is just a get operation, and it's a read-only access. So we can't actually go and modify anything in this particular data model. Um, so uh, that's just exploring the data model. Now that we've done that, we can actually go and, and interact with the device. And for all of us that have uh, worked with Yang data models before and, and you know trying to grab this information, directly from the devices, this is such a nice jump ahead to, even even from where we were with Yang Explorer, um, you know, just looking at this right now, it, it makes your life so much easier as a developer. 
Totally, yeah. That's the whole point of this is making developers' lives easier. Having a GUI tool that we can go into, click around, understand the APIs and the data models a little bit better. And then we can take either the payloads from this or um, the data models themselves and then build those into whatever tooling or, or systems that we're working with. Very cool. If I look at this and I'm looking at the tool itself, if I'm looking at it from an API perspective, just if I'm messing around with just some APIs, it reminds me a lot of Postman for network programmability and Yang. Uh, within Postman, I know you can go in and you know build out your, your header, your API method and call, whatnots, but you can also generate the code at the end. Is this something that's available here? Am I just jumping ahead? Yep, you're jumping ahead for sure. There are uh, plugins available to generate Python code, very similar to uh, like YDK or uh, capabilities that we've had in Yang Explorer as well. So yeah, generating code so that we can easily take that and put those into other systems, absolutely that's supported. It's awesome. So let's uh, take a look at how we can actually build up an example payload that we might put into some other tooling that we're building. So again, I'm gonna go into uh, select the data model set that I'm working with. And then let's use the same example here of the interfaces opera data model. Let's work with interfaces and, and understand the counters and the statistics that are going through uh, this device. So we can uh, use a netconf, op netconf operation of a get, right? We're gonna get data from this. And the device that we're working against here is a Smy Catalyst 9300. Again, here we have the uh, data model expanded a little bit further, but this time you'll notice it looks a little different, right? We don't actually see the metadata about the model. Now we actually have options to select um, specific leafs or containers that we're interested in. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put a tick box next to the statistics so that we can get all of these uh, these counters and, and packet counters and, and information about what's happening, as well as put a tick next to the interface name so that we can know which interface all these counters are for. Now that I've selected what I want to instrument and what I want to see, we can build this RPC. And this is really the power of Yang Suite, or one of the main uh, points of Yang Suite here, is generating this uh, XML for us. This is now is going to be transmitted to the device. The device will parse this and then send us back the results of, of what we're asking for. This is the equivalent of a, of a CLI, which is like a show interface details, or show interface detail, where we see every single interface listed and all of the counter statistics details for them. Let's go ahead and run this here. I'm gonna click the run command, and it's gonna transmit that XML payload, and then give us back the results here. So if I just scroll, if I wait for this to, wait for the demo to work. All right, so we got the results back, that's good. Uh, and here we can take a look at some of the results. So specifically, here's for interface VLAN 128, and here's the counters and the statistics that we were looking for. We can scroll up, and as we scroll up, you can see there's just tons of interfaces here, and, and let's just stop on one uh, at random here, uh, gig 40, right? So we can see, you know, there's pretty much nothing on gig 40, or let's scroll up to some of these other ones where we actually do have some, some connectivity here. So here's gig 22. Right, and how we can actually see the <clears throat> the in packets, the broadcast packets, and, and everything that we have um, that's defined within the data model. So here's just a really quick example of uh, building that payload in Yang Suite and then transmitting it to the tool, and then uh, just reviewing the results that come back. That's super cool, Jeremy. Um, that's about all the time we have today, but before we let you go, we always have one question we like to ask our guests. And so coming at you, uh, what's one superpower you would like to have should superpowers actually exist? Oh man, which which ones would I like to have if superpowers exist? Like I was thinking more like what is my superpower? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so definitely, you know, my passion and hobby over the past year or two has, has really been clean, healthy eating. So my superpower definitely, I'd, I'd like that to be like the ability to have like really good quality food and the skills and expertise to prepare and cook and enjoy all of that. So I think that's oh. what I would like to, to strive for. And that's where my superpower would be. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's great. Nice. It's a pretty creative answer. We've, uh, we've heard many answers throughout the show, but this is uh, pretty cool. Um, Great demo, great presentation. Thank you for joining us, Jeremy. And thank you, Snackers, for joining us on this episode of Snack Minute. See you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.